Hello and welcome to the Chet TV special presentation of the 2015 Santa Claus Parade here in Chetwin. Now kids are lining up on the street with anticipation of candy and of course jolly old St. Nick. Now Marlon Gomez joins me right now. Now Marlon, my understanding is that Chet TV had a special exclusive earlier today. We definitely did uh, and he actually gave the kids here in Chetwin some tips on how to stay off the naughty list. So have a look. So we're here with Santa. We got an exclusive interview with him. I've been a nice boy for the year, and he granted me the interview. Santa, so what's your favorite part about Christmas in Chetwind? Well, you know, besides the boys and girls, obviously, you mean. Uh, I love seeing the wood carvings here in Chetwind. I mean, and Rudolph, he can't get over them. You know, He's thinking you should do one of a reindeer with a red nose. You really should. That'd be a nice carving. It would be. It would be, wouldn't it? That would be nice. Now, the parade is about to happen. What's your favorite part of the parade here in town? <laughs> the candy. Because <laughs> I don't get like looking like this from not eating, you know. But uh, the people, all the people, whether they be children or not, we're all children at heart. That's good. And uh, Chetwin especially. So. Very nice town. And last question, what do kids need to do this year to stay off the naughty list? Well... Stay in school. Don't do drugs. Good. And listen to your parents. Maybe leave out some extra cookies for you? <laughs> and don't forget, I have eight <laughs> reindeer that I have to feed cookies to, too. So. All right, well, there you go. That is Santa. Make sure to leave out some extra cookies for you. Well, there you have it. Marlon Gomez interviewing Santa Claus. Now, with uh, the parade just moments away, I'm surprised you were able to get him on such a time crunch. He's got to get on that float, Marlon. I know, it's just uh, ever since I got here, I've been working on my Chetwind connections and they seem to work out real well, so I got the exclusive. So at this point, this is where you want to get your hot chocolate, your warm beverage, you're going to need it. It's minus eight in Chetwin right now. We're, we're cozy in our toques, we're ready to go for Santa Claus, we're ready for the reindeer, we're ready for the floats. Don't go anywhere, this is the 2015 Santa Claus Parade. Finally, the 2015 Chetwin International Chainsaw Carving Championship documentary is ready. The Chet TV production Nearly Lost dives headfirst into the background of the championship and how the competition almost didn't happen in 2015. For the first time, Chet TV brings you away from the carvings and goes behind the scenes with the carvers. And of course, find out who takes home top prize. Chet TV on Bell 655, Eastlink Channel 40, and on air on Channel 55. Chet TV, your station. You wanted it, you got it. Chet TV is happy to bring back Moccasin Flats to its regular programming, and it gets better. My Peace Country Home Pioneers of the Pine River Valley is returning as well. This time with over 30 minutes of bonus features including interviews, archive footage, and music. Chet TV on Bell 655, East Link Channel 40, and on air on Channel 55. Chet TV, your station. Wind turbines in the Zone of Beck area? Chet TV talks to the applicant Natural Forces on their wind farm proposal and residents around the Lone Prairie, Zona Beck, and Dickey Bush areas about their concerns on the project. Chet TV provides an in-depth look on the proposal, answering all your questions. For scheduling, visit peacefm.ca or stay tuned on Bell 655 East Link Channel 40 or on air on Channel 55. Chet TV, your station.
Hello and welcome back to the 2015 Santa Claus Parade here in Chetwin. Anticipation is in the air. You can see the flashing lights of the parade just around the first, I guess, turn here the, in the Chetwind area going towards the town center around to the IGA and of course into the IGA parking lot. This has got to be one of my favorite part of the holiday seasons. Of course going to the parade seeing jolly old Saint Nick your first glimpse of him throughout the year. Now Mar Marlon I gotta ask uh, you're joining along uh, commentary here with me for the 2015 Santa Claus Parade. What is your favorite part of the holiday season? Honestly Rob I'm still a little kid at heart and uh Probably presents and treats are still the best part for me. Um, a, getting presents, even though that sounds selfish, but you got to be excited about that, unless maybe you don't get good ones. Um, and giving out presents. There's always that good feeling when you give a present to someone and you see the joy on their face, so that's always nice. But the treats, I'm all about those treats, having those cookies laying there next to you and just having all kinds of like pies and whatnot. I'm a big fan of that. Big fan of cooking. As you can see, uh, the parade uh, is just going by right now. The first couple of floats. They're throwing out candy for the children. We don't see too many kids on the streets right now. The, uh, where we're set up, you can see a lot more children, a lot more families out there. But uh, I got to say, I don't know if I'm a big fan of the uh, the candy canes necessarily. More of the pastries. What, what would you say would be your favorite, uh, I, guess, I guess, your food for, I guess, the holiday seasons? You know what? Yeah, I, I totally agree. I actually wasn't a fan of the candy canes unless they were the orange crush ones. Those were pretty good. Um, as far as the pastries go, yeah, I'm all about the pies. The pies are what make Christmas for me uh, around that time. Or really any gingerbread cookies, like anything along the lines of that. Just anything with the milk really that goes well with the pastry, I'm all in. My mom made the best cinnamon rolls you'll ever taste. As we look at the school buses, they're all dressed up, uh, I guess they're all named reindeer as well. So you got the 10 or 9 reindeer, I always forget how many. And they're as school buses, which is always interesting. And I remember, it, it kind of takes me back to when I was in elementary school. The school assemblies, they're always entertaining, sometimes embarrassing. I, I remember we would have to sing along to the Christmas songs. And there was always, you know those songs that you could change <laughs> the words to make it either a little bit inappropriate or a little bit <laughs> funny, you know, the Batmobile lost his wheel, things like that. <laughs> well, now, what would be some of your memories of, I uh, say, uh, uh, Christmas assemblies back home? Before I get into that, I just wanted to say they made a really good, or they did a really good job on the buses. I thought that was really cool. Um, we w So back in high school, we like to uh, record. So we would sit in the middle, but we would like we bring a camera and we would sit in a big group of about 11 or however many guys there were and we would just start the heckling and the recording and then we could always look back after the assembly was done and just kind of <laughs> laugh at all the people that we would just yell random stuff at or that kind of thing on another note uh, there is a story that I'll never forget now I wasn't part of this but he's sure. a, he <laughs> he is a good friend of ours uh, but one of our friends uh, we'll call him Tom so we don't throw names out there but uh, during one of his Christmas assemblies he got up to the stage uh, this I guess grade 10 or grade 9 kid was playing uh, a song on his guitar and around that time is when that juicy uh, fruit commercial was going on when he would go juicy fruit is gonna, gonna move, move. Yeah, yeah there you go and then he would smash the guitar yeah, so he got up there, he took the kid's guitar, started singing the song, and just smashed the guitar. Uh, I did see a video of it, it's really funny, but then again, I think about the kid and how that was probably his guitar and he smashed it. I, from what I know, he bought him a new guitar, but still, uh, it was funny, yet, I don't know, tough situation all in one. The shock value, I'm sure, kind of uh, made everyone laugh at that. You'd hate to be the person who have your guitar <laughs> smashed. Uh, expect they're not cheap, those acoustic. I assume it was an acoustic guitar. Yeah, I know it wasn't. Like, it's definitely not. I mean, everybody was just howling and in shock that that just happened. And he was known for doing that kind of thing. By the way, I'm seeing some reindeer going by here. Yeah, the antlers, and they're all... The, what I'm impressed with is they have these Christmas lights on them, and I'm always familiar with the Christmas lights that are 
plugged into sockets and things like that. So I'm wondering, <laughs> like, it, it must be battery powered. I don't know, but you can see the fire trucks. You don't, they're not really battery powered. Uh, <laughs> that heavy duty from the Chetwin Fire Department. And uh, my understanding is that you had the opportunity of going around Chetwin and filming uh, Christmas lights on residents around Chetwin, around the the district themselves. What did you think of that? Yeah, I did. Um, I was actually really impressed. There were some people that definitely took it to the next level, and not that I wouldn't expect them not to. It's just uh, it was really nice and it was very well done. Uh, somewhere along the Crown subdivision, there was a, there's a guy or a family, I should say maybe, that has a Santa on top of what looks like maybe like a treehouse. I don't even know, but this thing looks like the Santa and like the real thing. It's just kind of like waving at you and. I mean, if I was impressed as an adult, I can only imagine as a little kid when you're driving by and you're seeing that kind of thing. It takes time. There's a lot of time and effort. And I can't imagine the electricity bill. We're from Ontario, yep. and electricity is through the roof out, out in Ontario. Here in BC, mm-hmm. it's, not, it's not that bad. <laughs> I can only imagine, like, I guess the holiday spirit goes down in Ontario because the electricity bills are so high. It's usually just <laughs> turn on the lights for uh, the actual Christmas day, uh, Christmas Eve. That's Well, that's the idea. You want to attract uh, Santa Claus to your house, make sure that uh, he makes a drop by. And as you can see, the lights are very bright here as the, I guess, the start of the parade comes around to the town center. You can see the season's greetings. It's spelt backwards, but uh, from the way they are. Uh, parade's approaching. It's spelt the right way. Um, yeah, you can definitely see more people lined up along the street side. A family tradition for a lot of these uh, families here in Chetwin watching the parade go by. Now, Marlon, I got to ask you, what are some of your family traditions from back home? I think a big thing, so I, for many of you that don't know, I was actually born in Columbia and I, I grew up there until I was about, I don't know, I think 10 years old or something. Um, a big thing there is just you open your gifts on, on midnight, um, as a, a Christmas Eve midnight as opposed to waiting to Christmas Day. And the whole thing is that, you know, at that point, the presents would appear under the tree and we would, as a family, <clears throat> go hang out in a different room and then come back at midnight and it was like, oh my God, Santa came by, he dropped off all the presents, he's off to another home. So that was definitely one that I'll, I'll look back to and always remember. I know that's known in or that's done in, a, in other countries, but I know that when I came to Canada, it was an adjustment to have to wait till Christmas morning. Even though I knew about that, it, it just felt strange, and I just wanted to get out the presents right away. And uh, what about you? Our family, it's definitely Christmas Day. It's almost like, what's wrong with you if you're opening them up <laughs> early? I gotta say, my uh, my parents sent me some Christmas gifts. Um, just from Ontario to Chetwin so I could open them up on Christmas Day. And, of course, anyone may be thinking, now, Robert, why don't you just open them up since they're there? They won't know. You know, it's a tradition. You keep them sealed. You keep them wrapped. Christmas Day, go ahead. I won't have my cin- my, my, my mom's cinnamon buns for Christmas morning. I could always make my own, but it's just, it's really it's not, it's really the, same, not huh? the same. It's really not the same. And, and, of course, would be watching... Um, a Christmas Story, which was my favorite, favorite, favorite movie to watch on Christmas. I would even watch it in August, like if it was aired more regularly. <laughs> but at the time, like, it's always a fun movie to watch. Um, you'll shoot your eye out. You want your Red Rider BB gun, which was the kid <laughs> wanting a Red Rider to BB gun, but everyone said you were going to shoot your eye out. So, Marlon, <laughs> I got to ask you now, what is your favorite movie? Growing up, definitely the Home Alone movies. Oh, yeah. I think that was the dream, right, as a kid? just Well, I mean, not the dream that your family left you, <laughs> but maybe to do half the things that he was doing in that movie with control remote cars and, I don't know, all kinds of schemes that he came up with that always... It just got me for some reason in the spirit, <laughs> as much as some of the things that he did were cruel, but we all know that at the end he would end in a family... <laughs> reunion and in a happy note so those were always fun and then now i think old as an adult i i always just get a good kick out of uh the movie elf um it's just i don't know it gets me every time watching the elf and just seeing half the shenanigans that he does i remember uh one christmas morning it was actually going back to my favorite christmas movie a christmas story that was a gift that was given to me how fitting on christmas day 
I get my favorite movie, and then I can watch it for the rest of my life. I don't know where it is now. I, th I think it's on VHS. <laughs> but that was easily one of my favorite gifts that I have received. Now, I got to ask you, what was your favorite gift that you have given? Favorite gift that I've given? Well, <clears throat> it, it's not so much the gift that I was giving, but it's what we would do growing up, my dad and I, to my mom. So on a side note, I think it's cool. They have the uh, reindeer's uh, names on the buses. That's really cool. But anyways, um, so when we would go get a gift uh, for my mom, my dad and I, uh, he would always take me along, and I would be part of the process. So that was fun. But the fun part was that we would always get a joke gift before we gave her the real thing. Um, so we would, unfortunately, make, come up with cruel things, but all in good fun and good laugh. I think the one year we put, like, toilet paper uh, and we wrapped it up and she opened it up and was very confused. Uh, I can't remember half the other things that we put as joke gifts, but it was just a good laugh. Yeah. Oh, oh, it was very right? pissed once you saw the real thing because the real thing was always pretty nice. And now you say you did this every year? Off and on. So if it didn't happen uh, for Christmas, then we would do it for her birthday. Uh, so <laughs> poor thing would get this a lot, but it became kind of like a, a little... I guess, joke that we would always play along with. As you can see, the kids are just grabbing candy off the street that they're throwing from the parade float. Now, I find it interesting that you mentioned toilet paper as a gift. We always had this, again, this would be more of a, not on Christmas, but a couple of weeks before Christmas, mm -hmm. another family gathering, and we'd always have this game. I don't even know what it was called. I heard different Bad Santa, different games, where basically you throw gifts into the middle, you pick up yeah. um, a gift, and someone has an opportunity to steal that gift. And there was always one gift that basically you didn't want. Want. Mm -hmm. And I remember one year it was toilet paper. So <laughs> there, there's use That's for it. Cruel. Some some people may want that. <laughs> Everyone needs it. <laughs> I, I, any any other things that you would do, like uh, even games for uh, around the uh, family table, I guess, around the holiday season. Because I definitely remember the Bad Santa or whatever the game it was that we had. That was definitely a go-to game for us to play. Not too many games, quite frankly. I uh, in Columbia it was just more a lot of dancing. <laughs> I mean, at, after the after the gifts were kind of unwrapped, then it was kind of like that moment of that happiness happened, and the kids were all just enjoying themselves. Uh, oh, are we going to commercial here? Yeah, we'll be right back. This is the 2015 Santa Claus. When the Japs bombed Pearl Harbor, they upset our thinking about a great many things, including Alaska. The great Japanese air and naval base at Paramushiro was only 750 miles from Attu. Attu was only 1,200 miles from the mainland of Alaska. And Japs in Alaska would be a direct threat to the west coast of America and also to the interior. With Canada's consent, the United States War Department decided to build a military highway from Rails End at Dawson Creek, British Columbia, to Fairbanks, Alaska, to link up and supply these airfields and to provide emergency access to Alaska for troops and materiel. Tourism Dawson Creek official film The Signal Corps and Chet TV presents a one hour special on the new tour of the Mile Zero Alaska Highway that is coming to Dawson Creek. Watch a presentation on the new tour, explore the routes and hear the experts highlight what to look forward to. Watch a short movie on the highway produced by Signal Corps and learn about some of the books that chronicle the construction of the Alcan Highway available at the Pine Tree Bookstore in Chetwind. Stay tuned to Chet TV Channel 40 on Eastlink, 655 on Bell and 55 on Air.
It's more than a medical clinic in the community of Chetwind. The new Chetwind Medical Clinic and Wellness Center is a bold and innovative step to secure effective and sustainable medical services, including doctors and nurse practitioners, for and in the community of Chetwind. The building concept was recommended in a report called the Preliminary Health Services Review and Assessment for Chetwind and surrounding area. Funded by Northern Health and delivered by the author, Brian Spooner. It recommended that the building be a joint project of the Mayor and Council and Northern Health to attract and to retain doctors and medical persons. The building concept engaged the entire medical community, the Mayor and Council, and members of the community. It demonstrates how a committed community works together effectively for a common purpose. The District of Chetwind Mayor and Council, Northern Health, and medical staff jointly developed the plans for the clinic. The District of Chetwind, with contributions from the individual members of the community, the Northern Development Initiative Trust, corporations, the Peace River Regional District, and from municipal funds, jointly financed the construction of the new clinic and expanded it to include a wellness center. The building was built from September 2014 to April 2015. It is the setting for medical staff, including doctors, nurse practitioners, public health nurses, home support staff, and mental health counselors. They meet patients of all ages from the community of Chetwind and its surrounding area, including the West Moberly First Nations and Salto First Nations. The new center is unique because the municipality and Northern Health took the challenge to develop an appropriately sized primary care clinic and freed up doctors to practice medicine rather than spend valuable time, energy, and funds in running a clinic. The time for a new clinic was critical since the old clinic was in need of repair, was not wheelchair accessible, and was poorly laid out for medical office purposes. The call for a new clinic was loud and clear, but no private corporation stepped forward. The decision to build a new public clinic and wellness center is a genuine milestone for our community. The ultimate goal is to have at least four doctors working jointly in unison with nurse practitioners to provide quality medical service in the community. This will eliminate the burnout of medical personnel and ensure prompt and adequate medical service. We have a new modern clinic and a welcoming community are the key words in further negotiations with new doctors and new nurses. It's more than a medical center in the community of Chetwind. It is an example of how a community works together to attract and retain medical services to ensure the future of the community of Chetwind and its surrounding area. It's the new Chetwind Medical Clinic and Wellness Center. Innovative, bold, and welcoming. Welcome back to the 2015 Santa Claus Parade here in Chetwin. Robert Spring joined alongside Marlon Gomez. Now, Marlon, you mentioned it a couple times already. We're actually from Columbia. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned a little bit about the Christmases in Columbia, but I want you to expand a little bit about that. I want you to expand about what that is, because I don't have a clue what uh, Colombian Christmas would be. It rolls off the tongue well. <laughs> no, I mean, in essence, you still get the whole Santa vibe and... Obviously, we can't make real snowmen. Uh, for the most part, it doesn't snow in most cities. Uh, if you go to some mountain peaks, there is some snow, uh, so that's nice. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think the big difference was, so the food that you think of instantly for Christmas is really not what we would have there. So when I came here, I all the things that you hear about in Christmas songs and that sort of stuff that you see on TV, that's when I really got to experience it when I moved here. Uh, but that's not to say that it's not fun. I mean, there's just a lot of dancing, a lot of people just having a good time. Um, it's a big thing where basically some people will just uh, invite your neighbors and just kind of make it a big party. I feel like here it's more of like a sit-down gathering sort of thing where when you go there, it's an actual party, having a good time kind of thing, which I, I really miss. So a drastic change. We go from probably plus temperatures in Columbia to today where it's minus 8 degrees. We're right in front. We're at the final stretch of the Santa Claus Parade here in Chetwin. We're set up in between the IGA and the Super Value uh, Superstore. Once again, the the school bus 
dressed up as reindeer. Now there's a little bit of discussion about these reindeer. Is there is there ten or is there nine? No one knows. <laughs> is there ten or is there there's Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Donner, and Blitzen. There's of course Rudolph. Yep. But now it's the discussion Oliver. There's Oliver, I guess. And I guess as the the poem goes, like it's Or is it all of all of all of all of the other rain? I say Oliver because that's just more of a reindeer name, I guess. But if we're gonna say it, it, I always thought we go back to the assembly. It was all of the other reindeer used to laugh and call them names. But I guess it was just one. It was just one reindeer that liked to exclude Rudolph. Or do you think it was? All of used to laugh and call him names. <laughs> Maybe all of used to pick on Rudolph. That's what I was thinking. Like it wasn't just all the reindeer. It was just one guy. Santa Claus just had to go after one guy, and the problem would have been solved. Christmas saved. <laughs> but again, they, uh, they got to navigate through that uh, the fog, which we got a pretty clear day here in Chetwind. Yeah, uh, a, a little bit brisk. We got some kids with some hot chocolate running around. Uh, the word is that there's going to be hot dogs being served. I haven't seen any yet. That'd be pretty good. One thing that I uh, was talking to some people in the crowd earlier on is that last year was about minus 20 or something like that, or close to minus 30 when the parade was happening. So definitely much better this year. It definitely feels a little bit colder than minus 8, but it's bearable, I would say. It's it's not too bad. Well, the only thing that I'm having a tough time bearing with right now is the I, – I know it's Christmas time. But the music, I've heard um, Let It Go probably three times already. You know the viewers at home, you probably heard it too. Marlon, uh, we're, we work with the radio station. We play Christmas music. I don't know. Christmas music? A little bit early? <laughs> so I actually used to work uh, in retail uh, before I started working in TV and radio. And um, that was just one of the big things that it just got really frustrating when I used to work at a Tommy Hilfiger store in, in I don't know, late November, sometimes they would start playing it. And I, oh, it would just kind of crush your mood after a while. Just that's all you hear. Not that Christmas music isn't wonderful and nice, but I'm more of the more a fan of it closer to Christmas. Um, although sometimes when it does play at malls, like I could see why it gets the people in the spirit and going, but at least have it when there's more closer to the day is what I would say. Yeah, on a more positive note, we just saw Santa Claus go by. He was waving to all the kids. All the kids like, that weren't necessarily at the curb at the time came rushing by to come wave at Santa, maybe shout a Christmas gift that they may have wanted. Uh, favorite part of the parade as it wraps up right now? Definitely the reindeer. That was really cool. Uh, I don't think I've been up close to a reindeer like that, so that was mine. What about yours? I got to say, uh, watching the tail end, it's funny the people who aren't necessarily involved in the parade joining the parade last second, coming through <laughs> right there as the parade wraps up. And that does it for us here at the 2015 Chetwin Santa Claus Parade. Thanks for joining us. You wanted it, you got it. Chet TV is happy to bring back Moccasin Flats to its regular programming, and it gets better. My Peace Country Home Pioneers of the Pine River Valley is returning as well, this time with over 30 minutes of bonus features including interviews, archive footage, and music. Chet TV on Bell 655, East Link Channel 40, and on air on Channel 55. Chet TV, your station. Wind turbines in the Zona Beck area? Chet TV talks to the applicant Natural Forces on their wind farm proposal and residents around the Lone Prairie, Zona Beck and Dickey Bush areas about their concerns on the project. 
Chet TV provides an in-depth look on the proposal, answering all your questions. For scheduling, visit peacefm.ca or stay tuned on Bell 655 East Link Channel 40 or on air on Channel 55. Chet TV, your station.